Hello, Drum Technique Academy. Travis Orban here, a beardless Travis Orban, here to answer your burning questions. Today we'll be talking about hand and foot technique, we'll be talking about open-handed playing, and we'll also touch a little bit on practice structuring and pads, choice of pads and such. The question is, comes from Ethan, and he says, Hey Travis, really glad you're back. I was curious about your development regarding techniques and what sort of things helped you decide a great, or de, excuse me, what sort of things helped you develop a great facility when it comes to controlling things such as volume slash control. All right. Well, dynamics are very, very much key. Um, but it's interesting because the, you know, a dynamic relationship is relative to the music that you're playing. What's loud or quiet in one style of music won't be loud or quiet in another. My initial relationship with dynamics, when I first started playing, uh, I was really into rock music, so I kind of gravitated towards playing rim shots and playing pretty loudly. And, um, and I, but I still played ghost notes, you know, I still had somewhat of a, an idea or a concept of uh, what ghost notes were and how to apply them. And that was kind of my approach, you know, it was just very taste oriented. And then I started taking lessons and started going through um, books that, well, some drum set books have dynamic markings, but the ones that have them the most are usually centered around snare drum work, rudimental practice, um, snare drum solos in particular. There, I went through a few books that were comprised solely of snare drum solos, and these have dynamic markings all over them. So that was kind of my first experience with actively trying to control dynamics from you know pianissimo all the way up to sforzando accents and decrescendos and crescendos and everything in between and then from there i discovered this practice technique the one i mentioned at the beginning and this technique it really helped my it helped build my facility all around um, endurance speed consistency especially and then with this enhanced facility became or came with a uh, an enhanced awareness of my dynamics i had much more control over the dynamic presence and just uh just a firmer grasp of of just how loudly i was playing because of this technique so this technique i call it i'm i'm probably sound like a broken record if you've uh looked up information about uh, what I've practiced before in regards to technique because I always go back to this and uh, I'm always going to lean into it because this is really it. This is the, where the bulk of my technique comes from where it comes and it's called, I call it the bare hand, barefoot practice technique and it's a combination of two ideas, two central ideas. One was from a drummer named Bill Melagari, otherwise known as Tiger Bill Melagari, and he always preached the importance of unison strokes, otherwise known as flat flams. And then the other concept was uh, something I saw Mike Mangini demonstrate years ago, and he, he was just timing um, strokes with different subdivisions on a practice pad with his bare hands. So I just married the unison stroke concept with the bare hand concept and then I eventually implemented the feet as well so I'm just going to demonstrate and then I'll break it all down feel down and heel up So, first we'll talk about the hands, 
as you may have noticed, they were not flush with my, excuse me, my quadriceps. They were not like this. They were like this. Do you want to know how you can watch this full lesson? Just sign up at www.drumtechniqueacademy.net. Drumming, as you know, is a lot like gravity. All it takes is a little push.